To me, she was Anna on a good day, whispering secrets in my ear. Annie, when she was shy like a schoolgirl, twirling pigtails between tiny fingers, I hardly knew she was there. And when she was formal, a businesswoman on a tight schedule with no time to stop for coffee. She was anorexia to the doctors who grimaced at my BMI and shook their heads at her destruction. The uninvited guest to my mother who wouldn't hold my hand for fear my wrist would fall through her grip. A blessing to my friends who longed to have her with them who exclaimed when I told them the size of my waist. She was not a disease, a curse, a stroke of luck. She was none of these things, not at first. First she was an idea, first she was a dream. She was the front page of Cosmopolitan, the Weight Watchers after picture, the Instagram photo of a girl in a bikini with a comments list seven pages long. She was the dieting tips in Health Magazine. She was my gaping reflection that couldn't seem to fit in the mirror. She was a channel for my insecurities. She was the only one who understood she was an escape. So when she came knocking on the back of my head and tugging on my heartstrings, I let her in, and an agreement was formed. She became the salad at every restaurant, the timekeeper until I could eat again, the skill that no longer creaked when my toes touched it, the space in my jeans, she was the flat stomach in a tight shirt, the no thanks I'm full, the I wish I had your self-control. She laughed at size three and grinned at my spine. She was the pools above my collarbones that not a soul dared to drink from, and everything seemed to fall into place until they decided I was too skinny. And Anna raged in my stomach, butterflies turning to knives. She made dark circles bloom under my eyes. She criticized their cellulite while I walked with knobby knees. She was the head down at their stairs. She was the tears when they forced bread down my throat. She became a bird in my ribcage that screamed when they told me to gain more. The shouts when they said that I was almost normal, as if Anna and I were not normal to begin with. So when my thighs touched and my hair grew and my eyes gleamed and the scale ground and my pants fit and the bird between my ribs could no longer fly, when Anna died, I was the only one to cry at her funeral.